All right, in this video, we are gonna go over the lecture we had planned for Wednesday, March 27th. So let's start with just a little overview of what we covered on Monday. So we first began with how do we get our fatty acids from our lipids? Um, so how do you even create them to begin with rather? So in your liver, if you have free fatty acids, that's where you'll make triacylglycerides. You'll put them in an apolipoprotein called VLDL. That VLDL will travel through your blood, go to your adipose, and then at your adipose tissue, you will remove your tags from your VLDL and store them as lipid droplets. Now, in your lipid droplets, how do we reharvest those tags for energy? So first, we need glucagon to come in. Glucagon will... Um, eventually start adenyl cyclase, which will take ATP in the cyclic AMP. Cyclic AMP will go and activate protein kinase A. Protein kinase A will turn on two things, or do two things rather. One, it will turn on HSL, hormone-sensitive lipase. Remember, a lipase is an enzyme that cuts lipids. Two, it will go over to the surface of your lipid droplet and it will phosphorylate a protein called perilipin. Now, perilipin, unphosphorylated, is connected to CGI58, another protein. When it's phosphorylated, it's no longer connected to CGI58. This allows CGI58 to go and activate adipose triglyceride lipase. What that will do is ATGL will cut off your first lipid from your tag, and then you have a diacylglycerol. Your diacylglycerol will be cut again by your HSL to make a monoacylglycerol. Then your monoacylglycerol will be cut by MGL, monoglycerol lipase. Every time we do a cut, we make a free fatty acid. And those free fatty acids will be carried in the blood through stream through serum albumin. Remember, lipids are nonpolar, so we need a protein carrier for those until they reach their destination, and then a fatty acid acid transporter will bring them into their cells. Now, when we're left over from the above process, we have three fatty acids. We have glycerol, so we want to harvest that glycerol for energy. We don't want to waste anything. And so we're going to put glycerol into glycolysis. To do that, we have glycerol kinase that will add a phosphate at the third position to make glycerol 3-phosphate. Then we have glycerol 3-phosphate dehydrogenase. Here we have a dehydrogenase, so we have NAD plus going to NADH. Uh, the alcohol group on position two becomes a carbonyl. That's actually DHAP from the... Um, uh, glycolysis. DHAP will turn into glyceraldehyde phosphate uh, gap using triose phosphate isomerase, and you are good to go. Now, how about those free fatty acids? So previously, we ended our story where um, they are being transported into the cell. So we need to harvest those for energy. And we're going to harvest those for energy in the mitochondria. If you are a small fatty acid, less than 12, you can go right into the mitochondria, no problem. If you are 14 or bigger, you are going to be traveling through the carnitine shuttle. Carnitine is just a, a molecule. And to get ready to travel through carnitine, you need to become fatty acid coenzyme A. So our first reaction is we're using an ATP to create our fatty acid coenzyme A. Once your fatty acid coenzyme A in the cytoplasm, you can then interact with carnitine because at cat one on the outside of the mitochondria, cat one will attach the fatty acyl to your carnitine, coenzyme A will be released. Now, remember your mitochondria is a double membrane, so your carnitine free acid will go to the inner membrane space and it will go to a transporter. So the transporter will bring your carnitine fatty acid into the mitochondria matrix. And at the same time it does that, a free carnitine will leave the matrix. 
So once we have our carnitine in the matrix, we need to remake our fatty acid coenzyme A. So CAT2 will do that. CAT2 is just like CAT1, but opposite. So here we're forming fatty acid coenzyme A. We are reforming carnitine. That carnitine's free to leave now. Right, so we are going to pick up on this story and then finally get into beta oxidation. All right, so before we get into beta oxidation, let's just talk about some of the players in the previous slides. And what we've been talking about the last couple of weeks, our first is coenzyme A. Now, if we look at the cell, right, this is mitochondria. And the rest, this is going to be the cell. And so we have the cytoplasm here. So you have two sources of coenzyme A. You have some coenzyme A in the mitochondria, some coenzyme A in the cytoplasm. And they have different roles. So in the mitochondria, the roles of coenzyme A are oxidative, uh, degradation. Actually, let me write it out here. So mitochondria. Oxidative degradation of a bunch of things. Pyruvate, fatty acids, and amino acids, some amino acids. So coenzyme A here in the mitochondria is for breaking down things. In the cytoplasm, it is opposite. The coenzyme A uh, can be used for the biosynthesis of fatty acids. Now coenzyme A is also used in different processes um, like we've been talking about for the citric acid cycle, but here we're just talking about fatty acids. <clears throat> Excuse me. So that's my coenzyme A. Um, we also have another molecule we've been talking about, fatty acid coenzyme A. And again, we have two different pools. We have one pool in the mitochondria, and we just looked at that in our recap, and another pool out here in the cytoplasm, which we also saw in our recap. So let's see what the two different pools are doing. So in the mitochondria, we can use that for oxidation and ATP production, right? And, and we saw this, um, well, we haven't seen it yet, but we're going to see it today. But really, when you make the carnitine fatty acid, you are dedicated to doing this. You are dedicated to being broken down. While in the cytoplasm, fatty acid coenzyme A can be used for lipid biosynthesis. So we can kind of see a pattern here with our coenzyme A molecules. In the mitochondria, right, your coenzyme A is really going to be for breaking down things. In the cytoplasm, your coenzyme A molecules are going to be used for synthesis, right? And that's, and it makes sense that you want to separate out these processes. If everything happened in the cytoplasm, you would have breaking down and building up happening at the same time you would have a fetal cycle. You wouldn't get anything done. Since these two um, uh, locations have such different uh, usages, uh, synthesis and breakdown, and remember, the way we transport is the carnitine shuttle. That's how we can bring fatty acid coenzyme in, in uh, the mitochondria. So the first enzyme of the carnitine shuttle remember that first enzyme was cat1 cat1 is what connected 
uh, the fatty acid to the carnitine. And as we just said, once you have been connected, you are going to the mitochondria. You, your fate's been decided. So this is big control point, right? We have to decide if we're going to use our fatty acids for synthesis or breakdown for energy. And cat one is inhibited by malanol coenzyme A. This is the first, the first intermediate in fatty acid synthesis. So this actually makes a lot of sense, right? If I'm building fatty acids, I will make melanol coenzyme A. If I'm building lipids, I do not want to break them down for energy because building takes energy. So I want to stop the shuttle that is doing this building. I want to stop the carnitine shuttle. So my first intermediate, melanol coenzyme A, goes and stops that shuttle, stops moving my um, fatty acids into the mitochondria so they can be built. Right, so that's kind of uh, how breaking down and building fatty acids are are in different locations of the cell, and that's also how we control where our fatty acids are at any given time. But right now, let's get to seventeen point two. So this is the last info for test three. Not the lost info, the last info. Oxidation of fatty acids. So we are going to do beta oxidation, also known as beta oxidation. Remember, this is happening in the mitochondria. And the idea is, let's just draw three, four, five. Let's draw a very simple lipid. So in beta oxidation, what we are going to do is we are going to break this lipid down into two carbon chunks. So these two carbons, every time we break down two carbons, we're going to make acetyl coenzyme A, which can go into the citric acid cycle. Every time we break apart, we will also be gaining NADH, FADH tool, that we can be using as energy. And so citric acid cycle also produces NADH, FADH2. And then once we get all that energy, we can do oxidative phosphorylation. to get ATP. So oxidative phosphorylation is what we'll be talking about when it comes to test four. That is the culmination of all this metabolism we've been building up to. But let's talk about um, beta oxidation now. So beta oxidation. There are four steps. And let's just draw a simple, just a simple, um, let's do six again. So we have a simple six uh, carbon fatty acid and we need to make fatty acid coenzyme A. Oops, let's do that. Meant to draw a sulfur there. So this is a six carbon fatty acid coenzyme A, just to make it simple. 
Our naming scheme is that the carbon after the carbonyl is our alpha carbon. And then the third carbon is the beta carbon. We are going to cut between the alpha and the beta. That's where we're going to get our two carbons from. Our first enzyme that we're going to use is acyl coenzyme A dehydrogenase. So this is a dehydrogenase. So we should expect like NAD or FAD to come up. In this, this version, we have FAD. So we have FAD, and that is going to make FADH2. So we have already, we have harvest uh, electrons that we can use for oxidative phosphorylation. Just to talk a little bit more about acyl coenzyme A dehydrogenase, there are three isozymes. Remember, an isozyme is a different version of an enzyme that does the same job. And we have three different versions for the length of fatty acids. So we have VL, M, and S. So VL is like very long. M is medium, S is short. So these different isozymes work on different size coenzyme A fatty acids. So very long is 12 through 18, medium would be four through 14, and S short would be four through eight. So right now we could be using our medium or our short um, acyl-CoA, enzyme A dehydrogenase here. All right. Something else to talk about this. So this FAD, FADH2, um, we have something that's called ETF here that is mediating um, this electron chat, uh, transfer. So what is helping these electrons to move in this reaction? It's called ETF ubiquinone oxido reductase. And all this is doing is that it's moving electrons from fatty acid to FAD in a stepwise manner. That is, if we were to look in this ETF ubiquinone oxido a reductase complex, we would see a bunch of parts in the protein. So I'm doing it very crudely. So here's your fatty acid over here. And electrons would move from one part of the protein to another part, kind of like handing off until they come to FAD. So it's what this ETF ubiquinone oxo reductase is doing is that it's allowing electrons to move from one molecule to another in a safe manner. Electrons are very high energy. Um, they're very dangerous if we don't have them controlled inside the cell. So this is a way to make them controlled. But let's get back to our main story. So we are doing dehydrogenase. We're cutting between the alpha and the beta. So that's where our chemistry is going to happen. One, two, three, four, five, six. And so what happens in first step one, double bond. So step one, dehydrogenase creates a double bond between our alpha and our beta carbon. So that's reaction one. Let's continue on to reaction two. Reaction two, we're going to have water come in and we're going to make a 
and this this uh, rather enzyme is called enol uh, coenzyme A hydratase. Enol coenzyme A, because that's basically what we're working on. And hydratase means we're adding water to something. So what we're going to do is that we're going to use this double bond as a perfect um, way to add an alcohol group. So all we're doing is we're adding an OH to the beta carbon. That double bond's now gone. Remember, our end goal is acetyl coenzyme A. So we want to cut off the first two carbons. So we have removed that double bond through our hydratase. Next, we have another dehydrogenase. We have L beta hydroxy acyl coenzyme A. dehydrogenase. So LB hydroxy acyl coenzyme A dehydrogenase. We have a dehydrogenase, so we should expect our friends because we're moving electrons, we're doing oxidative, uh, not oxidative phosphorylation, we're doing a redox reaction. So in this case, we do have NAD coming in to make NADH. When we are doing um, this reaction where we have NADH uh, coming in, we should expect a double bond to form, and we do. So where that alcohol group was, we're going to make a carbonyl group. Remember, that's the beta carbon still. Let me label it up here. This was beta. This was alpha. All right, and only one more step now. So remember the idea is I want to cut two carbons off at a time and I wanna do that for everything. And if we look at my molecule where I began with, the fatty acid had a coenzyme A attached to it. Remember that S, that sulfur is where the coenzyme A is interacting. So I need to remake C double bond O at, uh, coenzyme A, sulfur coenzyme A. So that's the last reaction. I need to, uh, where my alpha and beta carbon is, I need to cut between there and remake my fatty acyl coenzyme A. So the enzyme that's going to do this is acyl coenzyme A, ace acetyl transferase. This is called a thiolase, right? Thiol means sulfur and lace a lot of times. Um, I think of that as like cut. Uh, usually it's lice, but lace kind of also has that same connotation to me. And so for here, we need a coenzyme A, remember coash, that sulfur is the um, reactive part of coenzyme A. So we single it out. That's coming in. This will do our cutting with a sulfur. So we'll have one, two, three, four carbons. This was our old beta carbon. That is now going to have sulfur coenzyme A on it. And we will have acetyl coenzyme A. This can go to the citric acid cycle. That last carbon there was my alpha. And then you just repeat the process. You'd repeat the same four steps between your new alpha and your beta, and you'd make a new cut here. So let's just go over these four steps again. So you're cutting between the alpha and the beta. So you do double bond, OH, C, double bond, O, cut. 
So let's go over that again. Alpha beta form a double bond. On beta, add a alcohol. On the beta, make that a carbonyl. At the beta, cut by introducing a coenzyme A. And our enzymes that we're doing that were our acetyl coenzyme A dehydrogenase, three different forms based on how long your fatty acid is. Your dehydrogenase goes into your hydratase. Your hydratase goes into a dehydrogenase. Your dehydrogenase goes to a thiolase, right? So anytime you're seeing the dehydrogenase, remember we need an electron carrier and we're going to be forming a double bond. So our first electron carrier is FAD. Our second one is NAD. So dehydrogenase, FAD, hydratase, dehydrogenase, NAD, thiolase. And I think I'm going to cut it here. Um, I know it's kind of a, a short lecture there. Um, but since this is the end of our material, this is a good place to say, you know, take time, do those steps, try to get that down in memory. Just start with the fatty acid and just repeat this step uh, like three or four times going through it, cutting all those fatty acids off. Um, every time you do that cut, make sure you're naming the enzymes. That's the best way to like get this down in, in your mind. Um, with that, um, I will call it uh, a lecture as I'm going to go back to bed soon. Uh, on Monday, I hopefully should be back. Um, my cold should be gone by then. Um, but if you have any questions over this material, please let me know and enjoy your Friday off, people. I will see you next week.